Hey everybody, Bill and Deb. Hi there. I don't know if they can hear it or not, but it's it's raining today. Raining, raining, raining. Today is Monday. What? Uh, May the tooth. May the second. May the second. Yeah. Now yesterday, Sunday was absolutely beautiful. Today, you know, we even had the kids come out here to the campground and we uh, roasted some wieners and we made and, a smoke fire because yeah. we didn't have Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where were you, Jason? Yeah, Jason and Shelly. Uh, Jason was, uh, while we were at the rendezvous in Florida last February, Jason was the uh, resident fire starter. That's right. Yeah. Every he time, didn't have smoke fires like it, we did. <laughs> every time we did a campfire, Jason was the one to put it together, and he was very, very, very good at it. Yes, you know, he was. Makes you kind of wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, well, where was he? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, uh so we're just dealing with it. It's cooler today, too. It's not going to get out of the 50s today. That's the long sleeve shirt. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> but I'm just ready for it to be, you know, and here again, we know what's going to happen. It's not going to be no. uh, spring but for just, a bit. Just It'll go the, just boom the to side. boom. You know, what's if, that? If it was sunny, I would be... We would be doing some more finish up work on the trailer, and since which, it's not sunny, which I'm hankering to get going on some stuff. There's some things I want to do, you know. But before we go much further, show them, show them some paintings here oh, real quick. And show well, them that one there. Couple of, I've been working yeah. on. Yeah. These will be on the website. Yeah. Uh, under my art, um, I've had several people interested in them and sold a few. And check us out at uh, yeah, start to say recreation.gov. <laughs> Check us out at iridetinyhouseadventures.com, iridetinyhouseadventures.com, or you can email us at iridetinyhouse at gmail.com, or you can email us at iridetinyhouse at gmail.com. That's correct. All righty. <laughs> Those will be posted on the screen, too, so you can see them, you know, so we... Make sure we don't. We got we got brain fogs. <sighs> well, anyway, but what, right. we wanna, what we want to what we want to talk about today, and and uh, we want to talk about uh, things to consider when wiring your uh, cargo trailer conversion. It's another question we had, yeah. and we thought, you know what? Yeah. Maybe we should talk about yeah, it. Yeah, it was uh, this whole idea is based on a question, and, and I'll kind of give you uh, some background on how the question appeared uh, while we were doing one of our walkthrough videos. Uh, I believe it was John and Patty's trailer. I believe so. Which is the eight and a half by sixteen. Um, we're right now, just for the time being, they're using a blow-up mattress uh, when they sleep at night. Right, because they're not finished yet. Right. They're still working on right. it. Right, working progress. But uh, he, uh, John, made a, a comment in there uh, when we were talking about the little puck lights, which are all, you know, lovel. You know, they're they don't pull hardly anything. They don't. Um, the little LED puck lights that he had throughout the, the ceiling. And he mentioned that uh, they were all wired uh, with uh, number 12 stranded wire, even though they didn't pull very many amps. And I chimed in and commented and I said, well, that's the way we did it. The smallest wire we have on any of our 12 volt circuits is, is number 12 or 12 gauge stranded. Right. And then we it also cost that much more. Exactly, which we'll talk more <laughs> about that here in just a little bit. And then I also mm -hmm. commented that uh, not only do we use number twelve as the smallest wire, even on our lighting circuits, but when we uh, ran circuits to our pumps, and in this case we have two pumps. Right. We have the uh, fresh water pump, and then we also have the shower box pump, which pumps the gray water from our shower up into our gray water tank which is mounted under the bed in the trailer right uh, there's no such thing as gravity gravity drain on that <laughs> now that would work <laughs> it won't drain uphill folks so we had to figure out a way and we actually stole that idea from Marvin and Mary's trailer yes yes who stole it from the marine industry <laughs> exactly the, the shower boxes have been around in the marine industry for years and we didn't even realize it but it's a handy deal and we'll uh, you know we'll talk about about that more at a later what, date. One of these days we'll do yeah. our work sure. there. <laughs> but anyway, when we when we did that, when we made those comments on that video, well, then we had a question pop up, you know, why are you using such heavy wire? 
when number 12 is good for 20 amps and number 10 is good for 30 amps right and this is true number 12 is good for uh, 20 amps typically and number 10 is good for 30 amps typically okay but I want to the thing about you have to consider on 12 volt wiring is not only do you have to be uh, mindful of you know the amount of amps that you're carrying which in this case number number 12 yeah for those puck lights is overkill I'll admit that um, but something else that a lot of people forget to consider and what I'm going to do rather than uh, rather than me go into this I'm going to read something that I took from a uh, website and I will share the link to this particular website and this is what I used in determining uh, my wire size on both the first trailer we built and this one uh, this particular website they have a wire sizing chart and it's very critical when you're dealing with 12 volt wiring but let me read this first before we continue it says when determining wire size you must calculate now we're talking about 12 volt DC currents here okay when determining wire size you must calculate for the total wire distance for example if a wire is used for the negative side commonly called a ground wire the distance must be the full round trip from the power source to the load and back as both positive and negative wires will reduce the voltage this is also sometimes called a floating ground however if using a metal chassis ground only the one-way trip needs to be calculated because the chassis is so massive any voltage drop would be nil these calculators can adjust the result for either type of ground simply enter the point A to point B one-way distance between the source and load then select the proper ground type the calculator will automatically use the correct wire length depending on the ground type setting and this particular link that I'm going to share with you, uh, they have these wonderful uh, calculator, wire size calculators. And all you've got to do is follow the prompts, do exactly what it says, and type in like the length of the run from your power source, which in our case would be the fuse panel, the 12 volt fuse panel, to whatever appliance you're running it to. And then, then you decide, then you show whether you're going to be running a ground wire back or uh, grounding to the chassis right there at the appliance. And then it will tell you what size wire. What you got to be concerned about with 12 volt wiring is voltage drop. And you've got to try to limit that. And what this chart basically does when you actually look at it is it limits the uh, 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 voltage drop to 3%. Now what I did, just for grins, I went ahead and uh, used an example of, say, our uh, one of our pumps. Now, and you're seeing this on there, this is how I uh, figured this, but um, in our particular case, our pump is closer than 18 feet, but I used 18 feet length for one-way run to the pump. And because some of you out there building your cargo trailer conversions might have that much of a length. If you've got all of your wiring in a garage in the back and all your fuse panels and everything in the back and you've got a pump that's way up front, you know, uh, at the kitchen sink or whatever, wherever you decide to put it, then it's feasible that you could have an 18-foot run one way from there to the pump, especially when you consider that you might be taking it up, you know, up, towards the ceiling coming up along uh, close to the ceiling and then dropping back down it all depends on how you run your wire so I use the circuit length to be 18 feet one way then if you notice right below that it asked for ground type and I said ground wire so when you type that in when you go ahead and, and select that um, it uh, goes ahead and adds up the fact that you're going to be taking a ground wire back to the source the other choice you would have would be chassis ground and if you select that then it will take that into consideration as well now on load in amps I put nine amps now our pump I looked up the rating on our particular pump and the one that we use in the red trailer as well and it's rated at maximum amp draw of nine amps I don't think it draws that much I have monitored this one 
while we have it running and I don't think it's ever got to that point. However, this is what they show. So this is the basis that I use for this. And then when you drop down, it says ma maximum voltage drop. This is already figured in. Now you can change it if you want, but they're recommending no more than a 3% voltage drop. So then if you look over to the right side of the screen, uh, after I had uh, tapped on calculate down there at the bottom in the middle, it shows that the wire size recommended for this particular run, and this is where you're bringing the ground wire all the way back to the panel, uh, it shows a recommended size to be number 10 AWG. And then it shows what kind of voltage drop you'll experience and all the other jargon there. So this is why uh, we run the size wiring we, we did. Now when it comes to those uh, LED lights that John had in his trailer, and ours. And ours as well. <laughs> they don't pull very much. No. We figured it up. Our our uh, lights that we have here pull roughly about a quarter amp per light. You know? Right. Which is nothing. No, it's nothing. Um, so we figured it up. If we had every single light on in here, I think we're pulling less than seven amps. I believe that's right. That's for every single light if they were on full blast. And I don't even think it added up to that much. I think it added up to less than six, actually. I remember. Actually. I just yeah. smelled it. You know, we're not going to get technical here. No. At all. We've already um, gotten too technical. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, voltage drop when it comes to 12 volt wiring is very, very, very critical. And, and what happens is, if for some reason you had any kind of a, uh, a, a short of any kind and your fuse didn't blow, which is another story we can tell you about, uh, where we almost burned to death in a motorhome we once had. Mm -hmm. We'll tell that story another day. We've already told it a couple times, but I'm sure some of you new viewers uh, are not familiar with that. But uh, consequently, that's one reason why I'm really critical about. We're very picky. About yeah, that. about 12 volt wire. Yeah. But no, they don't pull very much. You know, with with all of these, but yet our smallest size wire we're using in our trailer is number 12. And then we're running number 10 for our pumps, which we have two of them. In our max fan. Did we say max fan? No, we did not. We ran the we're running fan. number 10 for our max fan as well uh, as both of our pumps. So we have three circuits that have number 10 AWG wire That's right. That's on them. Right. Now, every one of our circuits, we're bringing the ground back to the original source because quite honestly, to try to find a chassis ground after we'd already framed everything in here and built it all out, to try to go in and dig and find a chassis ground by drilling through the floor, through the wall or whatever to go to the chassis of the trailer would be very difficult. And for us, it just wasn't practical and it would have been way too time consuming. Plus we don't want holes everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> In case we missed. <laughs> so, you know, we brought all of our, all of our uh, 12 volt circuits have the positive going and then and the negative coming back. Now, I don't want to get on all this technical stuff where some of you say, well, technically speaking, you know, the, the negative is the one that actually carries the, the power and it, it doesn't run the way you did. Sure. Yeah. But that's immaterial here. That's immaterial here. What is important is we just want to make sure, especially on our DC currents, that we have an adequate size wire. Well, to me. Safety is very important, uh -huh. and why would I compromise safety over just such a minor amount of money? Amount of money. I mean, it's not <laughs> Come on. that much more to run. And what difference does it make if we run a little bit heavier wire? It yeah. doesn't have a negative effect. No, no. And it could have a positive effect. See, now I remember here a while back because we subscribed to several different cargo uh, trailer conversion Facebook pages, and one person posted a photo uh, asking for help where uh, they had ran a 12 volt DC circuit and it was some fairly small wiring that they had used. In fact, it, to me, it looked like it was speaker wire. Some, uh, you know, like you get at Radio Shack or they're off the shelf at and Walmart. And that's very fine wire. And it showed where, where the wire was running along uh, next to the paneling that the paneling was all scorched there. Well, basically, probably what was happening is, and there could have been some kind of a dead short in there too that was causing it to pull more more amperage than it should. There's so many reasons why that ended up like it was. But basically what's happening when you let your wire get too hot to the point that it will scorch what's around it. For one thing, you're that far away from having a fire. Uh, the next thing is what you're also doing is uh, letting the wire become the fuse rather than the fuse doing the work as the fuse. 
What? <laughs> well, it's true. It's true. So, you know, that's um, that's why we ran the size wire that we did. And, and of course, the, the best answer to that question, why did you do that? Why did you do that? The best answer is, why not? Why not? Why not? I mean, what are we talking about in the difference in dollars. cost? Dollars. A few minor dollars. Yeah, yeah. Now, here again, and we should have said this at the onset. We are not telling you that everybody no, no, should no, do no, what no. we do. Mm. This is what we did and why yeah. we did it. We he, never ever do how-to videos. We never do videos that say that you should do what we do. Nope. Never. Because we still adhere to that basic philosophy, whatever works for you is all that matters. And if the other works for you and you're comfortable with it, that's all that matters. Okay? We're just telling you why we did what we did and John you know he follows our channel and he he ran the wiring he, he did the overkill wiring for basically the same reasons because he saw what we did so that that's it on that you know do whatever you want to but we're just telling you this is why we did what we did and here again I'm gonna post the link to that particular uh, wire size chart and that will help you in determining the proper size wire you need to consider uh, when you're wiring your 12 volt circuits. <laughs> we got some more stuff coming up. Yes, we got another walkthrough to do. Yeah, we have two more walkthroughs. Later to do this week? Dur during, yeah, during the month of May, there's two more walkthroughs to do. And a brief thing about the van transmission, right quick. Uh, we did service the transmission, uh, new fluids, new filter. I would never dream of servicing a transmission without a new filter for those that ask that question. Uh, and we put an additive in it called Shutter Fix. And we've used it before, and so far, so good. It seems to be shifting just fine. Uh, when the lockup torque converter goes to kick out, it doesn't shutter when it goes to kick out. So we're going to monitor it here for a few days, and then we'll determine whether we take our next, uh, trip. We take our next run with the current transmission, and then uh, try to do a new transmission because we know it's inevitable yeah okay? it's gonna have to happen and then may and then maybe try to do the new transmission uh three months or so from now november ish yeah it would be <laughs> well that'd be longer than three months um it'll be much easier for us financially to do it later than now believe me yes but anyway but that's it we deal with what we got to deal yeah with. yeah enough about that enough about that we're gonna let you go it's bill and deb with i ride tiny house adventures we're not camping living. Y'all get out there, do some living. We'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.